Good, good morning. I'm Tamara Shoemaker. This morning, as I was trying to figure out what I was going to say, what I was going to write about on my blog, um, I stared at that empty cursor and it was just blinking for a long time while I was trying to wrap my mind around what happened as I was praying this morning. I couldn't find the words for a long time. Um, so I'm going to give you an assignment. First of all, go either Google When God Ran by Benny Hester and listen to the whole thing, or go to the, I'm going to try to leave the link in the um, description of this video and see if you can get to it from there. But go ahead and listen to that song first, because that's sort of a, a basis for what happened to me this morning. And then after you do that, come back here and listen to this. Um, you're in front of a mirror, picture it. You're looking into it. It's covered over with condensation. As you're looking at this condensation, you're trying to see where you, you are at it. And there's no reflection. And it's disturbing not to be able to see yourself in it because you're confused and you're sad and you're uncertain. And so many things are coming from every direction and they're pressing on your heart and somehow not being able to see yourself or those things clearly in the mirror makes it harder to understand who you are or understand where God is or what he is doing. And so as you're looking at this, you see a finger begin to write words in that condensation in the mirror. And those words say, tired warrior, come rest. Weary child, come sit. I will bring you to green pastures, still waters, a banquet table. So the condensation clears. And when it does, you see him in the distance on the other side of a wide open field. Psalm 18, 19 says, he brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So you step through that mirror, which is now no longer a mirror, but now a door. And as you do, you see him run. He runs toward you as though you are worth it as though you are the sole intent of his heart, as though the creator of the universe, the one who strung the stars in space and the one who shaped the oceans and put them in their basins, as though the one who formed the tallest mountain and every last creature who moves on the face of the earth, that one, he ran to you. And he ran to you like he couldn't wait to meet you. And so you run to meet him too. And there in the middle of that field, he throws his arms around you. It's not a gentle pressure. It's not a polite side hug. It's a full on tackle intensive bear hug. And you know how in the best hug that you've ever had, you tuck your chin right in the hollow of that other person's neck and you squeeze as hard as you can as though somehow through the pressure of that hug, you want to let them know that you don't ever, ever, ever want to let them go. And you realize that in that moment, in that hug, in the middle of that field, that you don't have to. So that is the eternal hug. That's the moment that holds still for all time. And that from there, in the shelter of that hug, in the place where you are completely surrounded by his love, you can face anything, anywhere, at any time. So I heard a word from the Lord two days ago in the car. It was a single sentence, and it came at the end of a long day of struggling as I processed bits and pieces of what, it, of what feels like massive spiritual warfare for this world and for the people in it. And I had all sorts of questions for the Lord. I was saying, you know, why is there infighting? Why are we, why are we stabbing each other in the back? Uh, an army that's supposed to be firmly united to face the enemy? We are not doing that. By enemy, I do mean Satan and all his forces of evil. They're having a heyday slipping in amongst our ranks and confusing and causing confusion and disorder and pointing fingers and anger and hey, even hatred, one follower of Christ against another. Can we understand how awful this is, how ineffective this makes us against the one we should be fighting? Anyway, as I was processing all this and praying, I heard the words, there will be casualties in this evil warfare. And it broke my heart because I like happy endings. I want all the good guys to live happily ever after, and I want all the bad guys to get their comeuppance, right? But this morning, in that hug, Jesus tucked my head against his chest, 
where I could hear the steady tempo of his heartbeat, reminding me of the safety and the security that I could find in his arms. And as he spoke, I could hear the vibration of his voice against my ear. There is a happy ending, he said, because the seed that dies brings new life, and that life is eternal life. You have been born again, says 1 Peter 1, 23-25, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable seed, through the living and the enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So, Jesus went on, don't be brokenhearted when the casualties fall, because I gather them to my heart. You fight the battle from the shelter of my side. I'm right here. And he rocked me gently as a mother does a child, smoothing back my hair, kissing my forehead. Weary warrior, I give you rest, he said. Matthew 11:29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So if you're fighting this battle, don't try to do it by yourself. Do it from the shelter of his side, because you are my help. I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you like the best hug ever. Your right hand upholds me, Psalm 63, 7 and 8. So think about how God runs to you. Let me say that again. Think about how God runs to you. In the words of that song, some of the words, I remembered his love for me, and down that dusty road ahead I could see. It was the only time, it was the only time I ever saw him run. And then he ran to me. He took me in his arms, held my head to his chest. He said, my son's come home again. Lifted my face, wiped the tears from my eyes. With forgiveness in his voice, he said, son, do you know I still love you? He caught me by surprise and he brought me to my knees when God ran. Do you need the reminder today that you are worth the run? That you are worth the flat out sprint the creator of the universe makes because he is so intent on meeting you. Meeting you. I sure did. Nothing else matters. Not the worries, the fears, the pressures, the struggles. More specifically, not the stress of another year of grad school. Not the worry of finding a job once it's completed. Not the wide-eyed fear of watching a world tilting off its axis in a country that's going rabid mad at one another. Not the concern of seeing a fractured and divided church. Because while all those things are big things, and while they are important battles to fight, I fight them from the shade at his right hand after the best hug ever. I hope that encourages you today. I'll see you later.